Okay, and finally, the last has certainly not been heard about the Ekiti South senatorial tussle, though the court has sealed the fate of litigation arising from the February 23rd National Assembly election in the zone. The man at the receiving end is protesting over the verdicts. Former Senate spokesman Tayo Adeyeye has petitioned President of the Court of Appeal seeking a review of the judgment which obtained his election as a senator. In, in the petition, Senator Adeyeye claims that there are errors in the document relied upon by the appellate courts to decide the case against him, which, if not corrected, will set a bad precedent for the country's judiciary. So, I have on the line with us Senator Dio Adeye live, I think from Abuja. Thank you, Senator. Thank you for having me. All right, what, after the verdict, the verdict actually proclaimed Senator Abiodun Olujimi as the person that was elected in your constituency. So what really happened? Well, as you all know, you are a journalist, and as Nigerians know, and most importantly, as the people of my constituency know, I won the election hands down. It was even a landslide. There was no, let me tell you a few things. The election was held on the same day as that of the president and the House of Rep members. Even the House of Rep members, that we all had the same votes, they didn't even go to court to challenge the result of the election because there was no violence in the kitchen. There was no, no, no malpractice of anything recorded anywhere. As a matter of fact, the cross of our case was that there was under voting, not over voting, please mark it, under voting, which is totally unknown to Nigerian law. And now, even during the, um, during the time of the tribunal, they called only 14 witnesses for 14 polling units out of over 650 polling units in my senatorial district. And none of those 14 witnesses, none of them, was able to say that election did not take place or that, this, that the results were falsified. As a matter of fact, they virtually confirmed everything, the results that uh, INEC recorded. Now, the, whole, the, the, the judgment was based on a sheet, on a compilation by the returning officer of Senator Olujimi, who was never a police agent, who did not witness, who was not in any police unit to witness anything, he came out and to say that this is the result of his election report. And he wrote this report on his own papers and submitted it to court. <laughs> the court did not ask to see the ballot boxes. The court did not, um, uh, as they normally do, see the ballot boxes examined by itself in open court. No, no, they didn't see anything. They went ahead and accepted, I mean, the, 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 uh, uh, the research he, he compiled and gave it more probability value than that of INEC. If my election is wrong, then the election of every person here that day in my central district will naturally be wrong, that of the president, that of the members. Because we've actually, it was the same process. People were voting at the same time. The truth of the matter is that this is a time bomb for Nigeria electoral system. And it is horrible for the Nigerian judiciary as well. Because how do you, how, how do you justify that you will give probability value to a result compiled by somebody who never witnessed it, who is an agent of one of the interested parties, and you place more probability value over it than that of the INEC that, was, that is saddled with the constitutional responsibility of con conducting elections? All these points we push to the Court of Appeal, who unfortunately upheld again um, the judgment of the tribunal. And look at it, oh, the, the most absurd of all this is that even the report they relied on, which is pure ERC, is full of mathematical errors. Wow. I give you a lot of instances. We identify 55 mathematical errors. Mm -hmm. for, exam for example, over 55 mathematical errors was identified. For example, in one unit, according to the report of this uh, returning officer of my opponent, when you add 20 plus zero, it will give you 50. <laughs> when you add 40 plus zero, it will give you 67. 
Now, when you add 37 plus 1, it gives you 71. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the result that the Court of Appeal applied. Wow. Assuming that paper is even genuine, coming from a proper custody, can you, on the face of it, with such mathematical errors, rely on such a thing? And that is what they compiled and then declare a result. So that's why I say it's a, it's a time bomb for Nigeria, because are we now saying that the court has established that when you were at 37 plus 1, it is now 71 and not 38? <laughs> Senator, unfortunately, the Court of Appeals seems to be the last bus stop for any senatorial contest. It's not done. And you are... I have a responsibility to petition the Court of Appeal because I think it's capable of really destroying the Nigerian judiciary. Because you cannot even cite this case as a precedent in future. And I want the judges to be man enough, to be honest enough, like the case of Aulu about Chagari, to say that we cannot cite this one as precedent. If there are some, some estimating circumstances that made them to make this kind of uh, absurd decision, they should be able to come out and say it in the interest of Nigerian judiciary and in the interest of Nigerian democracy. Because this, this is horrible. And it's, uh, it cannot stand any scrutiny at all. And as a lawyer and as a journalist, it is my responsibility to make sure that this democracy, which we all fought for, works and that it survives. And I believe that this kind of judgment is capable of draining this democracy. It is horrible, it is bad, it should not be allowed to stand, and the court should have the courage to be able to reverse it. Because it is terrible. I, I, and even going further, when you, when you find that an election is fraught with irregularities, of course, my election was never fraught with irregularities, the remedy that is available is already in uh, Section 140, Subsection 2 of the Electoral Act. They went against that, which is that you don't declare any winner, you will say, go and do another okay. election. Mm -hmm. But they went so far as to declare a winner because they know that if they are to repeat this election 100 times, I will always win. Hmm. And so my opponent is afraid, and those who are, are co conspirators are afraid that if they declare another election, I will win any time, any day. And I'm saying it now, if they declare another election now, I will win, win, win with a larger majority. That is the truth. So you have disenfranchised the entire people of the south of Nigeria. And it is not fair to them. You mm. disenfranchise them, they know who they voted for. Go there, go and do any research, they know who won the election. And I am fighting not for myself, I'm fighting for them. That, that will not be their lot. So what can we do now as a lawyer are looking at our laws? How do you think this kind of um, thing can be averted in the future? What, what kind of um, rejigging would you want to see? Talking about our law now, and uh, especially as uh, concerns the electoral tribunals. Hmm? I think we, we lost Senator there, but the bottom hmm. line is that he, he lost at the tribunal mm. and the, the went to the Court of Appeal and the Court of Appeal actually declared Abiodun Lujimi from a, a South Senatorial District mm. as the winner of that election. But Senator Daya Adeye has a bone of contention and it's going ahead to ask the Court of Appeal to review its judgment. That's, mm. I don't know how far that will go. Mm. Yes, um, as we said um, last week, um, what the Supreme Court did in the case of Rotimi Amiti was unprecedented. It had never happened. But then the Supreme Court took that decision and it went down the street. Now what Rotimi didn't ask for, so, the Supreme gave, Court Supreme gave, 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 gave because the Supreme Court gave, no, to teach a lesson, not just to ask for, but to teach a lesson that impunity does not pay. They wanted to, to, to make that point, that impunity does not pay. You can't say because you are president of a country, you don't want this person who won the primaries, mm -hmm. and then you just stop him from enjoying the fruit of his labor. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that a time could come when um, this kind of decision could be taken. That look, we have looked at this case, mm -hmm. and this case has so much merit. Mm -hmm. This is our decision. It takes, and my, my, my feeling is also that if infractions are become too common, too rampant with... Because uh, going by the calculation, the, what he calculated, 
you know, so many mathematical if, mistakes. If, if infractions become too common with the appeal courts, it may get to the point that the Supreme Court may begin to handle the final such cases again. Not be the last that's, how, that's how we had, that's what, what happened with, with, uh, governorship. with governorship. Because when people look at uh, Sullivan Chimes' matter, mm. even when the people who rigged for him came to court to say this was how we rigged the election, Chimes mm. still managed to survive uh, at the appeal court. So, and at the end of the day, it was decided, okay, let this thing get up all the way to... Okay, I think we have Senator Adi back. Senator, what no. do you hope to get from the Court of Appeal? No, I, I asked the question that what, what kind of rejigging would you want to see uh, in terms of our laws to ensure that this sort of thing does not happen again? Just, just briefly. I, uh, thank you, yes. I, I think the law, uh, uh, the National Assembly in 2010 tried to do something about this kind of thing. They said that in under section 142, that when you find an election to be terribly um, uh, fraught with malpractices, the remedy should be to go and do another election and not to declare a new winner out of an election you say is marked with irregularities. How can you have a winner out of that? Now, in my own case, the election was clean, quite all right, but assuming the, the irregularities that they have alleged happened, and I have told you the mathematical impossibilities that are contained in that judgment, mm -hmm. like adding 37 plus 1 and saying 71 instead of being 38, they should have asked at least for another election to be ordered. Okay. But they know that if we hold this election 100 times, I will always win it. And with a landslide. It depends how people know who they voted for. So I am okay. expecting that now, Senator, instead of being our time is fast spent. part of the Constitution. Our time is yes. fast spent. Thank you, Senator. Our time is fast spent. Thank you mm -hmm. for your time.